Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel. Things have been hectic and I definitely feel like enjoying this white dwarf, which, which is issue 465 and it has a whole bunch of different cool things in it. And we're going to go through it and enjoy it and relax because I really want to do that. Right. Oh, oh my goodness. So, free timekeeper's transfer sheet inside. Don't mind, I'm, I'm on my work table. Our white dwarf itself, tomb keeper's, tomb keeper's transfer sheet. Um, which for anyone who doesn't have tomb keepers, looks like it would be a bunch of pretty generic uh, pieces as well. A poster for Dark Tide. And so on, I guess. Doo -doo. All right, what's to say? Uh, Tonekeeper's Crusade Rules and Short Story, The Olgor Cell Swords of Excelsis, Age of Sigmar, A Tale of Four Warlords, Anvil of Destruction, Create a Hero, Conclusion of Chronicles of the Wanderer, and much more. So the Anvil of Apotheosis is still ongoing with. A third edition Age of Sigmar, which makes sense because none of the rules of third edition had anything to do with specific character creation, and you could definitely use it as such. Mm. Alright, so let's have a look at this transfer sheet. What are those white pieces? Oh, numbers. Okay, numbers up to 16. Well, that's handy. Alright. All of this looks good. Chapter symbols, close support, fire support, battle lines, squad numbers, vehicles, vehicle company markings. Good. It's nice. And our poster, which looks to be about 33 inches by 20, 30 inches by 22 inches is roughly my estimate. It's a cool poster. I have to put it up somewhere. Hmm, where shall I put it? I see poster in the background for that. Um, ooh, Tyranids versus Custodes. Cool. That will be next year and uh, next month, I guess. Flashpoint Broken Realms, Flashpoint Carried Out in War Zone. We're an open book. Hmm. <laughs> Hello again and welcome. Oh, where's the team? Lyle Lowry. Hello, Managing Editor Lyle Lowry. Oh, team. Team's gone. Well, hello, team. Anyway. Uh, did, hello again. Welcome to another exciting issue of White Dwarf. This one's actually particularly exciting because in addition to all your favorite cover-to-cover -cover content, this issue includes a transfer sheet for Tome Keepers. You asked for it and now you got it. Cool, thank you. Bum, 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 bum. Now you've got everything you need to collect a Tome Keeper's army and take them on uh, Crusade. A load of new Tome Keeper's content for you. Okay. And the uh, various things that are coming up. Well, look at you. Golden Demon, the Master Duelist. Very cool. That's super cool. La -da -da -da. Oh, look at all these lovely things. This is a dank old tragoth by Jedaminus Jonatus. Jonatus? Sorry. It looks really nice. I enjoy this uh, transition. So pretty. What's he stepping on? A rock. Er, a rock and a. And a. Bone Skull Olgor Tyrant by Danilo Mil Milella. Nice oranges. Wow, that's an interesting style of fetid bloat drone by Andy Kelser. Creepy. Super creepy. Like what you did there. Also creeped out by it. Death Watch Captain by Adam Langton. 
like all the skulls you got going on there. He is uh, coming across something pretty creepy, isn't he? And I very much enjoy how you've got the skulls underneath all uh, ground colored and then exposed skulls above. Good thinking. Blood Angel's Interceptor actually made use of a door. Very cool. By James Collard. Painting question. The Null Myriad. Cool. Da, 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 da. More tech guard by... Uh, da, 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 da. By... Who? Hmm. Dominic asked. Blah, 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 blah. And I want a color scheme for the null myriad. Okay, so not anyone in particular. It's the whoop. It's the group. The null myriad. Okay. Wow. Oh. 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 This is a so much better representation of um techless. Than the original piece. Ah, so cool. Oh, yes. Oh, look at that. Now that is so fantastic. Oh my gosh. Who's this by? Rochelle Parent. I hope I said that right. Ah, so pretty. So pretty. Oh my gosh. It's fantastic. Look at those wings, all the detail, all of it. Oh, nice. A Scorpic Lord by Dave Gent. Wow. He is like, it reminds me of money for some reason, like hordes of money. That is a really cool color scheme. Really cool. Ah, look at that squig. Warboss Gruck by Alex, uh, Alexa Miano. On a piece of wood. Neat. Look at that squig. Ooh, pretty branch witch by Anders Engberg. Yes, look at that. Nice coloring. I really like your scythe. Uh, Erwin and Mary on foot and mounted by Joe Ree Jones. Cool. <laughs> uh, Worlds of Warhammer delves into the background of the Age of Sigmar and the 41st millennia looking at how stories are created and legends are born. This issue's article continues where last issues left off exploring the legacy of global campaigns. Cool. Uh, with Phil Kelly continued. Um, so, The Perfect Storm of Chaos. The epic death of Medusa V, crown of the nemesis, a new era of war, the fateful fate of Conor, 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 uh, malign portents, and similarly malign sorcery, and conclusion. <laughs> In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. Uh, I recognize this war specifically, the Caradon Sector War. Caradon Sector. Ba -ba -da, Galactic War Zones is an ongoing uh, series of articles showing how uh, you have to build and paint your Warhammer 40,000 armies based around the planets on which they live and fight. This month we're going to the Caradon Sector. Very popular place right now. Look at that art. Pretty. Ooh. The War of Rust and Slime. Oh my gosh, look at these guys. Oh, they're printed. Bears of the Ferric Blight, Israel Gonzalez, Death Guard Hail from the Second Plague Company. They brought the Ferric Blight to the fortress world of Capstan and fought many battles against the subsectors Mil Metallican defenders. A few subtle conversions. Looks good. Wow, these are intense. And I like how they're all on red bottoms. That really brings out their colors really nicely. Oh my gosh, look at those. 
Plague burst. Haulers. Cool. Whoa, what in the world is going on there? That's cool. So cool. Oh my gosh. What are you? You are an interesting piece of work. Cool. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Play with Crawler by Andrew King. Oh, who's this? No, I did say it. It was, yeah, Gonzalez. Andrew King, Plague Burst Holler. Pretty. Super pretty. Normally, things are creepier. This is super pretty. And the Cult of the Bladed Cog by Neil Roberts. Very much enjoying those jeans dealers. I like his pose. Who's that originally from? Mm. Uh, Ocarium Steelclad Executioner Soul Pharaoh by Lewis Collins. It's intense. It's pretty cool. Okay. Light Lord Terminators by Arthur Hyam. Hyam? Uh, looks lovely. Like that. Where did that come from? Not originally from you. Inspired by a unit of Terminators. Golden Demon. I think the color scheme is really striking. I agree. Do -do 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 -do. Grasslands of Colossi, where they're fighting. Cool. That's pretty. Oh my goodness, they're like the... Chinese warriors. A uh, thousand suns. Look at that. Wow. The Rubric Marines of Dios by John Wilson. Cool. Very cool. I bet they look fantastic on a battlefield. Orc Freebooters uh, by Adam Cooper. Like you. You got the red eyes. You totally have the red eyes. Yeah. Oh, pretty. So this is Battle by Ash Low. I like that color scheme, so pretty. Mm -hmm. The Order of the Cleansing Tide. Pretty. Oh, nice. Death Shroud Terminators by James Gallagher. Cool. They look good. They look good. Colors of Contagion. Nice little arm presentation of how to do uh, the slime version. Death Guard. The Fessened ones. Cool. Chaos Space Marines. Um, a Fell Tide. The battlefields of the 41st millennium are many and varied. From some orbital space stations and rune cities to carnivorous jungles, sentient alien worlds, and toxic rad deserts, this new mission is set on the mid-ocean gantries of the water world of Fathom. Fathom, cool. <laughs> A little strike force mission. Do, 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 do. Oh my gosh. Stop it. Put you somewhere else. Oh, looks nice. Uh, I like those Electro Priests. Painted. And the orbs. Crusades of a chapter. According to Imperial Records, there exists 1,000 Space Marine chapters. Uh, keen, to the, keen to tell the story of one, the White Wharf team have founded a chapter of their own creation, the Tome Keepers. In the fifth article in the series, our chapter goes on crusade. Cute. Little crusade mission. Name generator, shall we? D66, wait. It is D66, okay. Simply roll 2D6, one after the other, sure. Abel Zeri, Amel Ishtar, P 
Carvis Apple. Mm -hmm. Legends of a Chapter. With the Tome Keepers now a well established part of the Warhammer 41st lore, the White Dwarf team wanted to delve into their background even further, and what better way to do so than with a short story? But what does it take to write one? Oh, creating a chapter. Forging legends in the beginning, tentative first steps, a chapter about a chapter. The final chapters. In words recorded, in legends remembered, follow a brutal action against an implacable alien foe, Sergeant... Following a brutal action against an implacable alien foe, Sergeant Ishlar of the Tome Keepers recalls the death of one of his battle brothers. Oh my. Okay, well, I won't give that away. That seems super fun to read through. Echoes from the Warp. Echoes from the Warp is a regular column about the rules, tactics, and ongoing development of Warhammer 40,000, curated by the team's games developers. This issue, James Gallagher joins us to talk about the Crusade system. Hello, James Gallagher. Enjoyed your stuff earlier, if you're the same as James Gallagher. Do, 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 do. Setting an example, the journey, considerations. What is the story of my army? Are the battle honors or battle scars I select a product of the narrative? Or is my narrative a product of the battle honors or battle scars I select? Should I use this powerful ability every turn? As long as I have tried to achieve, as long as I have tried to achieve my victory conditions and stuck to the agreed narrative, does it matter if I don't win? Of course it doesn't. I assume crusades are for fun. Mission packs. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Atmospheric insertion. Illustrator Scott says, ooh, illustrator. Hello, illustrator. He takes pictures of people's Warhammer models and adds digital effects to transport them from kitchen tables to epic battlefields. Here, Scott talks about his inspiration and how he creates art from art. Nice. Stormcast Eternals painted by Francois Morin. For this piece, I added in a lot of background and elements, but kept the focus on the models with a few glow and lightning effects. Very pretty. Super nice. Ooh, that's nice too. Liege Cavalos painted by Jamie uh, Massinet. Ossiac Bone Reapers looked great, surrounded by mist and glowing spectral effects that reinforce their otherworldliness. Pretty. Oh, it's monochromatic. Ah, oh, looks super fun. Space Marine Lieutenant, painted by Sebastian Torsel. The model's snowy base inspired the snow effect and black and white rendering. And Loon Boss, painted by Alistair Hutchinson. I kept the mist in this piece quite soft to help highlight the incredible painting on the miniature. Oh, super fun. Oh, that seems super fun to do. Goodness, these must be so fun to create. Oh, should I try this? I'm inspired. Oh, so much fun. Wow. I would do that. I would totally have so much fun doing that. Oh, cool. And how he does it. Digital paint over tutorial. Thanks, Scott. Oh my gosh, that'd be so much fun. From the maelstrom of a sundered world, the eight realms were born, and with their birth became a war to claim them. This time, Tome Celestial, the Anvil of Destruction, and four mighty warlords. What do we got? Ogors. Home Celestial. Ogors are not particularly fussy who they fight for, as long as they get something out of it. Meat and ale are preferable, though shiny trinkets are almost as good, so not quite as tasty. But can the Ogor mercenaries that arrive in Excelsis be trusted? Oh, Excelsis, the new um, Sigmar uh, city, yeah, uh, in the book. Um, the Krognos book. Yeah. Cool. Um, uh, ooh, Vondia. To brave the climb sea. Glutter bulk. <laughs> ooh, glutter bulk. 
and Durko Walrus Biter. <laughs> walrus Biter. Oh, right, he's the, um, the big guy. Uh, Mega Gargant. Kraken Eater Mega Gargant. Unnamed one. And who are you? An Ogre Maw Tribes Tyrant. Yeah. Fun. Ah, oh, fun. Okay, what do you do? Yeah. White Dwarf Anvil of Destruction. Interesting. Oh, this is the piece that I can take out if I want to. Uh, Glotor Bulk. Let's see. Eight wounds. Six movement. What's his cast, cost, though? Well, I suppose he's probably cost the same. Oh, yeah, he's Anvil of Destruction, so, you know, around the same, I guess, as a regular one. Uh, eight wounds, six movement, four plus save, eight bravery, stone carved mallet, a four attacks, three plus to hit, four plus to wound, run minus one, two damage each, all right. Gulping bite, uh, one attack, three plus to hit, three plus to wound, one damage. Gulping bite definitely sounds like it has a special ability, maybe. Uh, it's armed with both, yep. Yeah. Uh, Moss Seeker, you can reroll save rolls of one for attacks that target this model. Reroll save rolls of one for it. Yeah, okay. A stone horn shield, roll a dice each time you allocate a wound or mortal wound on a five plus that wound or mortal wound is negated, also now called a five plus ward. Uh, they look a bit tasty. You can use this command ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so, pick one friendly gut. Buster's unit wholly within 12 inches of a model with this command ability until your next hero phase if the unmodified hit roll for an attack made by that unit is 6. That attack scores 2 hits on the target instead of 1. Okay, sounds good. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Whoa, 35 wounds. It's been a while since I read anything about these guys. I don't remember them being 35 wounds though. Oh my. Alright, uh, Durkle Walrus Later. Mm -hmm. 35 wounds. Uh, starting off with a 12 movement and a 4 plus save. 18 inch hurled debris. 3 attacks, 4 plus to hit, 3 plus to wound, red minus 1, d3 damage. Flail of wanton rune. And he's a monster, of course. Monster? No, monster. Monster. So he's got the new monstrous rampage ability going on, which is always cool. Oh, do, 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 do. Flay of Lantern Moon, 3 inch range. It counts as melee though. Uh, attacks 4, 3 plus to hit, 4 plus to wound, run minus 2, 2 damage each. Of course it does. Of course, of course it counts as melee if it's 3 inches. Silly me. Uh, where are you? Is it the other part of you? Ah, there's the other part of you. Right. Okay. I have to cut it out. Yeah, you'd have to cut it out. Uh, Durko Wal Walrus Biter is armed with both of those. Guttural force. If the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with a melee weapon that targets this model is one. The attacking unit suffers one mortal wound after all the uh, all of its attacks have been resolved. Unmodified hit roll for attack is one. That targets this model is one. That's cool. Um, really nasty against hordes going against him. Nice. Long shanks. Well, I guess nasty all the time, but Super nasty then. Longshanks. When this model makes a normal move, it can ignore models that have wounds characteristic of 10 or less, endless spells, mag magmic invocations, judgments of corn, and terrain features that are less than 4 inches tall at their highest point, cannot finish the move on top of another model or within 3 inches of an enemy, on enemy model. Good. Son of Be Behemoth. 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 I really need to... I always get messed up because of the dragon. In Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. If a spell or ability would slay this model without any mo any wounds or mortal wounds being inflicted by the spell or ability, this model suffers d6 mortal wounds instead, which is always nice. I mean, you don't want to take out know, your really big guy immediately. Uh, crush char crushing charge. After this model makes a charge move, roll a dice for each enemy unit within one inch of this model. On a two plus, that unit suffers d3 mortal wounds if it is a monster, or d6 mortal wounds if it is not a monster. And fungus induced stagger. After this model has made a normal move, pick one enemy unit with a, with a wounds characteristic of two or less that was passed across by this model 
and roll a dice on a four plus d3 models from that unit are slain. That's really cool. As command ability. <laughs> After this model is made a more uh, a normal move, and he moves 12 inches, quite possible. Fungus induced stagger. Jeez. Durko cannot resist a pre battle tipple of hallucinogenic fungus ale. Stumbling his way across the battlefield, he takes little notice of the pests that stand up to hit to his staggered march. Drunken stumble killing off things. Cool. The Siege of Excelsis. Following his defeat at the Tusk Vault, the mighty Gordrak has turned his attention on the city of Excelsis. While his vast horde assaults the city front gates, other sneakier allies work to undermine the city of secrets from the inside. Ooh. Cool world. Look at all this stuff plans. Ooh, four battle plans. Yeah. Ooh, Anvil of Destruction. I'm not going to go over this, but you can choose a tyrant from the Ogorn Ma tribes or a mega gargant kraken eater in particular for some reason to create your new hero uh, the tyrant is seven destiny points and the kraken eater is 30 desti point destiny points so you only have 10 destiny points to add to that kraken eater cool <laughs> la, 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 la. there they are again Shown off. A tale of four warlords, Lumineth realm lords, slaves to darkness, cities of Sigmar, and Hadonites of Slanesh. This is Martin's Martin Leon's Hammer Time. Lumineth. A Valinor. It's looking good. I like your super shiny gemstones. Pretty. Pleasure and pain. My first 1000 point game was against Callum and his Hedonites. Hedonites. Miyuki Folks. With her slaves to darkness. Mind stealer pharynx. Oh, nice cat. You're very cool. Silver armor, black armor, and gold armor. Ooh. Made up of three different warbands. Cool. Uh, the Order of Morda by Rich Packer. So intense colors. Mm -hmm. So nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they've got their other 1,000 points lists down below too. The Host of Excess by Callum McPherson. I like this, how you painted that. Nice and dark. Very cool. They look great. Super great. Rules of Engagement. Okay. Rules of Engagement, curated by the Age of Sigmar Games de developers, focuses on the creation, design, and evolution of the rules for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. This issue, Lewis highlights the biggest battle tome updates in Broken Realms Kragnos. I particularly very much enjoyed the Broken Realms Kragnos book that Games Workshop gave me. It hints at maybe a return to Wood Elves, perhaps? Is what I'm guessing. Gloom Spike Gits, Bad Moon, Bad Moon Loon Shrine, The Jaws of Mork, Glog's Meganob, Grim Scuttle Tribes, The Sylvaneth, and uh, The Sylvaneth and Kragnos, The Sylvaneth's new um, flute player is uh, in there. It's in that book. Had a Knights of Slanesh, Seraphon, Cities of Sigma, oh, lots of information, Beasts of Chaos. Ooh, ooh, 
of this the Golden Demon stuff. The Golden Demon is the most prestigious Warhammer painting competition in the world, with countless painters from across the globe taking part. This month we chat with the many-time winner Mark Lifton about duels, di dioramas, and finding the spark of uh, inspiration. A white dwarf asks, how did you get started in the hobby, Mark? And he lets them know, which you'll have to read. How did you do <laughs> with your first golden demon, I think? Woefully. Uh, conversions do seem to feature pretty heavily in your entries, because they are the funnest, of course. Ah, uh, nice. Look at that. It's perfect. The first cut. Oh, I love it. An eye for an eye, fatal extraction. Oh, I love it. Look at that. You name all of yours. How neat. Ogor Hunter. What a nice crossbow. Where did that crossbow originally come from? <laughs> from the Stone Horned Rider. Cool. Love love how you did that so cool uh so near and yet so ah okay, oh, that's so awesome ah, i love it fantastic title ah uh, gracia oh it's so much fun i very much like your flavor your flavor is super fun chaos renegade versus Drukari cabalite not nearly as fun in oh this one's called spring <laughs> Very cute. By Izzy Lifton, age nine. Ah, his daughter Izzy. Oh, I love this style. Mm, Mark, it's hammer time. Orc ward. It's hammer time. Cute. Path to victory. Oh, we're bad. That was fun. Uh, in this Path to Victory article, the Box Game Studio takes a walk on the wild side and embraces the savagery of Beast Grave. Here they offer deck building tips and tactical advice on the new on the two newest warband, the Crimson Court and Hadrak Head Crackers Mob. I'd really like for the Crimson Court to come back in stock so that more people get to get it. It's, they're so pretty. Look at those pretty models. I really hope they return to being able to sell them. That'd be nice. Dun, 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 dun. La, 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 la. Dun, dun, dun. Bum, 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 bum. And it have multiple people looking for those models. The Hostiles of Cursed City. The Cursed City has been overrun by the undead. Its populace cooed by the half Feraled uh, vampire, Rudikar the wolf. Sorry, Radikar the wolf. Here, I, I have a Radikar because Games Workshop gave me a Chris City one. And I can never remember how to pronounce his name. So his name is M Ragamuffin. I'm just letting you know in advance. Here we take a closer look at the legions of undeath that made the Cursed City their home and what you will need to watch out for during your games. Corpse Rats. Mm-hmm. Bat swarms. R uh, dead walker zombies. Which... I had... I totally wish they'd made ten different ones. And five different really recognizable molds. But I did... All, all of mine, I cut off pieces. You know, the copies. I cut off pieces of the copies and flipped it. Flipped them around. Change their headstones so they're more different. You can do it. Gorslav, the Gravekeeper, the Ulfen Watch. Oh, and if you're not familiar, you used to have to have 750 points of being to use all of these, um, all the vampires and um, all of these characters could only be used all together. All together, 755 points of the Verkhost Dynasty had to be used together. But now. As of 3rd edition, if anyone noticed, which I imagine people who actually have it did, Radukar the Wolf can be played 
by himself. All the others have to be played together, that's 10 models I think, but Radukar can be played by himself for 150 points, so thank you for that. And Tiffany is going to be trying out Radukar, and uh, it's nice that we can play him outside of the other guys, which was not the case in 2nd edition. Oh, well, the, prior to the uh, book, book, the General's Handbook 2021 and the updated profiles. Yeah. Saga of the Realms, Black Library. Countless are the tales of the mortal realms and the heroes and armies that wage their wars across them. It's just for this reason that Black Library has come up with a useful reading guide to help you navigate your way through these epic sagas. Well, that's really nice because I was actually someone hoping to read all of them. Um, so I'll have to send this her way. Uh, the Age of Sigmar, the Age of Chaos is finally over, wreathing in the lightning. Sigmar's Stormcast Eternals begin their liberation of the mortal realms by retaking key realm gates for the forces of order. So, the first one is Realm Gate Wars, Volume 1, Realm Gate Wars, Volume 2, Hallowed Knight's Plague Garden, Eight Lamentation Sphere of Shadows, Overlords of the Iron Dragon, Black Talon, First Mark, Helmakar, Champion of the Gods, Callus and Toll, the Silver Shard. Ooh, that's a great first read. And then the Soul Wars, so that's Age of Sigmar, and this is the Soul Wars with Nagash. Um, Soul Wars, Sacrosanct and Other Stories, The Tainted Heart, Shadespire the Mirrored City, Hallowed Knight's Black Period, Pyramid, Gods and Mortals, Scourge of Fate, Myths and Revenants, Gloom Spite, Stormbolt, Warcry, Champions of the Mortal Realm, Ghoul Slayer, Beast Grave, Neferata, the Dominion of Bones. Uh, isn't there? There's another book about Neferata somewhere. The Court of the Blind King, Prophet's Rune, Oaths of Conquest, Lady of Sorrows, Trials of the Mortal Realms. You could read the Red Feast and Rulers of the Dead separately time before the coming of of Sigmar. Uh, Realm Lords, Warcry Catacombs of the Blood Blood of the Ever Chosen, Coven, Covens of Blood, The End of Enlightenment, Enlightenment, Gitslayer, Cursed City, A Dynasty of Monsters. Dynasty of Monsters. Hmm. Cool, very cool, very cool. Fangorn Unleashed. In this issue, the Middle Earth team branch out with a tactics guide for one of the larger heroes in the strategy battle game, Treebeard. I have Treebeard. Oh, I gotta paint Treebeard. Here they get to the root of what makes the Ant such a fearsome foe on the battle top, on the t tabletop. They for nothing. Uh, I'm thinking my Treebeard is going to be a tree lord. Don't be hasty, don't be, ah, uh, don't be hasty, it brings back memories of the show. Uh, Marion, Marion Pippin with Rock and Stone. Ooh, uh, the White Bearded Ancestor, ooh, who could that be? By David Geimer, as the Age of Myth draws to a close and the Age of Chaos reigns, the Maker faces many tough decisions. Will he intervene in the salvation of his people? Or will he see them face hardship alone? Perhaps the future of the Dwarden race rests in the hands of another. Cool. Um. Uh, why don't I remember the name of this person? I just have the, it, the maker in here. Oh, uh, maker. Of, uh, 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 uh. Oh, I can't remember the name of the maker. Oh, well, maybe I'm completely wrong. I, I just assumed it was the god, dwarf god. <laughs> Inside the studio. <laughs> and so we come to the last few pages of the magazine where we get to show off all the studio's latest hobbying. Do 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 do. Battle. Ooh, pretty. 
nice to free stuff. Lovely little Necrons. Um, battle. Um, battle being carried out. Mm, what was that? Looks like Warcry? Those are too big for Warcry. Uh, must be small game of Age of Thinger? No, 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 no. Maybe. Uh, Ulfric Greymane, Lord of the Moon Eaters, Kit Bash model. Looks pretty. A vehicle or monster? Uh, the Cloud Killer. Cute. What are you shooting at? The Cloud Killer. <laughs> well, I like it. Oh, the hobby bingo. Oh my gosh, people are so ahead of me. Oh, pretty. Pretty. So Matt Hudson is totally winning. He's going to complete his sheet. Whoa, <gasps> that guy. Ooh, oh, that guy. Forge World, yeah, which hero fant? Painted the hero fant, yeah, hero fant. Forge World. Creepy thing. But Forge World is going all plus, is being turned into Warhammer, right? So we'll see him in plastic, or we'll see him disappear. I'm guessing he's gonna go plastic, which would be nice. Which would not be nice. This guy's a beast. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Boy. That's creepy. <laughs> Oh, who is it? Um, um, Dirk? Dirk? Wainer. Wainer? Very cool. Cool. I like the random little tank there. Being a ruins of a tank. Oh, that was fun. Super fun. I needed that. That was great. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed reading along with me and I have got to go back and read through it more. Ah, oh, this was great. This was a great reprieve. I don't know what you do to find your uh, little window of fun time in such a crazy world, but this was definitely mine today. I feel so much better. Thanks for watching. Bye! Gonna paint miniatures and gonna find paints. Yes, I really like to do so. I don't know what I'm saying. Off I go before this gets strange.